see with this little carrot over it, little hat, whatever you want to call it, that's the proportion of a sample. Okay, so if you're only taking a sample of a population. So, in this first exercise, before we get started, I'm going to ask you a kind of a hypo hypothetical question. A school is trying to determine the proportion of students who own a cell phone. Okay? So, the population here is all the kids in the school. And we're trying to figure out what proportion of them own a cell phone. How would you go about doing that? If, you, if that was your task, what would you do? Come on. Anybody. Maggie, what would you do? If you had to figure out, and we'll use Hamburg High School, if you had to figure out, wanted to figure out what proportion owned a cell phone, what would you do? Why the juniors? No, 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 don't read it what they're doing. What would you do? So if we've got a, you know, 500 kids, we have more than that. Let's say we have 1,000. If we have 1,000, what's a good portion to you? 50 to 100 of them. That's a good portion of 1,000? So she's, well, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. She would take a sample of, let's just say, 50 of them. She would take a sample of 50 of them, ask the 50, Let's pretend that 49 out of 50, I'm going to do that, 49 out of 50 said, yes, I own a cell phone. So that's 98%. That's, now listen carefully. That's 98% of the 50 people that she sampled. Yes? Does that mean that 98% of the school owns a cell phone? No. Is it probably close to that? Probably. Does it necessarily have to be close to that? No. She only took one sample. She could have gotten abnormally lucky with the 98%, or she could have gotten abnormally unlucky. Maybe, it's, maybe it should have been even higher than that. You have to pick the one, school, one person in the whole school that didn't have a cell phone, right? So taking one sample, although it's a nice option, I mean, it's, a, it's an option. You could get abnormally lucky if you just take one sample. Or you could get abnormally unlucky. So what Maggie might then do, because let's back up. Why didn't you just sample everybody here? It's a lot of people. It might be hard to track everybody down, right? So realistically with population, so it's a lot of times it's hard to grab everybody. Are you listening? It's hard to ask everybody. So getting a, getting the actual population and the actual answer for what that proportion is is nearly impossible in, in, in the real world. Because it's hard to track everybody down and make sure you can comment for everybody. So she took a sample. But with one sample only, you might get abnormally lucky or abnormally unlucky. So what she might do is throw those 50 people back and re-grab 50 people and sample again and get that population proportion, let's say that time she gets 48 out of 50, only 96% of those. And let's say she throws them back and she takes another sample of 50. Well, this time only 40 out of the 50. So she got abnormally unlucky with that sample. Now, for the record, we're assuming, and you would definitely want this, this is always part of the, the process, that her sample is totally random. Yes. Right, So she's not going to one group table in the cafeteria and asking those first 50 people that are in that corner because they're probably all friends, they probably come from similar backgrounds, they probably have other similarities. So instead what she might do is she might look at a list of all 1,000 students and grab every 50th person until she gets 50 people. Or she might use a random, you know, assign them all numbers and randomly grab them. So she's making sure she does this as randomly as possible so that these other factors don't sway the results. That would be a bias, right? If she just went and grabbed a couple lunch tables at, at the, in the cafeteria, okay? 
So that's just the idea of what we're going to be looking at, grabbing sample after sample after sample. And then once she's done, let's say she does one more sample and she gets 50 out of 50 on a cell phone. Now we're up to, you know, in that particular sample, she got very lucky. Once you've taken multiple samples, now when you average all of those proportions, now you're going to get more and more near what's actually true. Theoretically, you'll get closer and closer. Does that make sense? Okay. So in this first exercise, here's what they do. They do a survey of all juniors, not to be taken lightly. lightly. They do all juniors. They find that 168 out of 236 have cell phones. Then they take only a sample of freshmen and find that 30 out of the 52 sample owned a cell phone. So A and B is fairly straightforward, but the vocab you want to hang on to, calculate the population proportion of juniors. The juniors one is considered the population proportion because they did every single junior. They did the entire population of juniors. So 168 out of 236 is... 0.71. So 71% of the juniors own a cell phone. That's a fact. It's not about 71. It's 71% because we did survey all of them. With the freshmen, though, we only did a sample. So this notation is different. This one is P equals because it was the entire population of juniors. This one for the freshmen is got that little hat over it because it's only a sample of, what is it, 30 out of 52, which is 0.58. Now, because this was only a sample, it certainly looks like the freshman ownership rate is lower, but we could have gotten very unlucky with the 52 kids that we happened to grab. Does that make sense? Okay. So how do we determine how much luck was involved here or how much fact is, invo is involved here? So in exercise two, it piggybacks off the same problem. We would like to determine how likely it is that a sample of 52 out of a population proportion of ownership of 71%. So this is saying, let's assume that the entire school population ownership rate is 0.71. They're just going to assume, just for the sake of, pretend that it is. How unlucky was that, would that 58 have been then? Okay. So, there are programs you're going to have to run, and there are um, links on my website, and I'm going to pull that up right now, where we're going to run a simulation. So, I have to take this with me because... On my website at the bottom is the population proportion simulator. We're not actually going to do what Maggie did and retake a sample of 50 kids and then throw them back in and retake a sample of 50 kids and throw them back in. I mean, in, re in reality, you might. But there's a simulator that will kind of do that very quickly for us. Um, so there's a couple things that you're going to type in. The population proportion. This just said to assume that that's 0.71. So pretending that that's the actual rate of ownership, what's our sample size? We're taking samples of 52 kids. That's what we just did, right? We took the sample of 52 freshmen. We're going to run 100 simulations. So they're taking 52 kids, seeing the proportion, throwing them back in, resampling. We're going to do this 100 times over. And then run simulation. Okay. So here are our results. Organized, and there's a hundred numbers listed there from smallest to biggest. So let's pretend the first time they grabbed 52 kids, 58% of them owned a cell phone. And then the next time, 58% again. And then sometime down here on one of the trials, they grabbed 52 kids and 75% of them owned cell phones. Do you follow what's happening? question so far? So they did Maggie's experiment a hundred times. And then they averaged them all together. 
So when they average all of those 100 different trials together, that average, that 0.71, will be very close to the population proportion. It should be dead on. If not, it's very, very close. Okay? So if we scroll down, um, we don't have to worry about the standard deviation. This is what you're going to see a lot of. Okay? These are the 100 different, there should be 100 bars there. Okay? And so, assuming that the population is 0.71, this is kind of an odd simulation. By the way, when everybody in here runs the simulation, you do the same thing. It's truly randomly generated, so everyone's going to look slightly different. Okay? So your only your results won't match exactly what my answer sheet says either. So here's the question. If this comes from a population where we know it's 0.71, 71% ownership, what were the what were the chances of getting something as low as 0.58? How many of these are as low as 0.58? Three out of a hundred? Right? So there's only a 3% chance, approximately, we'll always use those words. There's approximately a 3% chance, let me more careful here, that getting the 58% ownership amongst the fresh freshmen was truly unlucky, which isn't very, you know, 3% isn't very good, right? Okay. It could have been unlucky. The population rate of ownership of freshmen could be 71%. But based on our simulation, it looks like that's only 3% chance possible. It's pretty unlikely that that would happen. Do you follow? Okay. So, on your note sheet to answer the questions, and again, always think carefully about how we word things. Run the program, sample size. How many of the 100 simulations had proportions less than? Granted, my chart was kind of hard to tell if I go here. How many were less than point or equal to 0.583? So I guess it was three. Exactness. So three out of the 100. So then based on that, how likely is it that a sample of 52 from a population with a cell phone ownership of 71% would result in a sample proportion? How likely is it? Not very likely since it only happened 3% of the time in our simulation. Nothing's impossible by the way. But it's not likely or not very likely or extremely unlikely when you're as low as 3%. So if I jump to D, because this is kind of where my mind is going next, so what conclusion then can you make about freshman ownership? Is it probably the same as the rest of the school? Is it probably higher? Is it probably lower? What would you say? It's probably the same. How many people agree with that? How many think it's the freshman ownership rate's probably higher than the rest of the school? How many think it's probably lower? It is probably lower, okay? There's only a 3% chance that it's the same, okay? The reality is this is probably indicative of the fact that freshmen own less. We didn't get, or we could have, but we probably didn't get so unlucky that we happened to pick all those freshmen. So we would say the conclusion is that freshmen probably have an ownership rate less than 0.71. Really, there's a 3% chance that that was so much lower due to luck. 
Is it possible? Anything is possible. Yes. Because when we pretended that we knew the ownership rate was 0.71, it did happen. Okay, it did happen that we got some as low as 0.58. Only three out of the 100 trials, which means 97 out of 100 times it's going to be higher than that. But anything is possible. Okay, flip to the back. Um, let's say we have a population with 0.25 proportion of being 65 years or older. So let's just say elderly. Retired. We won't use elderly. We'll use retired. Um, let's take different size samples from this population and see how the sample proportions behave. Use the program simulator. So we are going to treat the population proportion like it's 0.25 on our simulation, but we're going to change the sample size and see what that does to those values. Are you with me? Okay. Um, so I have to jump over here. We're going to treat the population proportion like it's 0.25. 25% so of the people are retired. The sample size we want us to start with is 10. We're going to run 100 simulations. Up my numbers. Now, when I only did a sample size of 10, on the low end, 0% were actually retired, up to 80%. So in that middle column, write 0 to 0 0.8. If I change the sample size and I grab 20 people, here are all the different proportions of them that are retired. As low as 0.05 to as high as 0.45. Changing the sample size to 50, rerun, the lowest is 0 0.1, 0 0.10, the highest is 0.38. And lastly, a sample size grabbing 100 people at random, what proportions of those are, are retired? 0.13 to 0.38. Generally speaking, what's happening? If you only take a sample size of 10, 0% of them could be retired, right? up until 80% of them could be retired. Versus 100, if you grab 100 people, the chance of none of them being retired is slim to none, right? You're probably gonna get one, so you wouldn't get a zero. It's very unlikely. 13% to 38%. What do you notice about this gap? It's shrinking, and it's shrinking and narrowing down getting closer to 0.25 because that's the population proportion. See, if you only sample 10 people, there's a chance none of them are retired. But if you sample a million people, you're going to get some retired people. And the more, the, the, the takeaway from this is the more you sample, the better. Okay, your sample size can't be too small. Because if you just look at two freshmen, you might find that neither of them own a cell phone. But if you grab 25 freshmen, you're not going to find probably that all 25 don't own a cell phone. So the bigger the sample, the better. Does that make sense? Any questions? All right, we'll stop there. You have to go onto the website and use that simulation calculator to do your homework. Keep in mind, the simulation, the time I clicked the button and ran my simulation, gave me my answer. Your answers will not necessarily be exact to mine. They should be in the ballpark, but they won't necessarily be exact. So don't feel like you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Well, there's a link on my website. So if you just go to my website at the very bottom, there's a link.